Okay, I'm going to go through a second example of using bubble sort. And in this one, um, I've chosen a list of numbers that are quite close to being in the correct order. Okay? I just want to show you what happens, because uh, this is a key idea of the algorithm that sometimes gets forgotten. So I'm going to write them in my column, and I'm going to be counting the comparisons and swaps as I go. Okay, so first of all we look at comparing 5 and 1. They're in the wrong order, so we've got to write 1. Then 5 and 2, they're in the wrong order, so 2 gets swapped. 5 and 3, they're in the wrong order, so 3 gets swapped. 5 and 4 are in the wrong order, so 4 gets swapped. And the 5 has been pushed down to the bottom. Okay, so I can box off the 5. And I made, there were 5 numbers, so I made 4 comparisons. And I can see I made four swaps. Okay. Now, one and two, they're in the correct order. Two and three are in the correct order. Three and four are in the correct order. Okay. So when there have been, well, in this case, there were three comparisons and there were zero swaps. When there have been no swaps on a pass, it must therefore mean that the list of numbers are in order. So the algorithm ends right there, and all of them can be boxed off. All the remaining ones can be boxed. Okay? If you have a pass with zero swaps, you're done. That's it. There are no more comparisons. A lot of students at this point would box off the four, then compare one, two, and three, box off the three, then compare one and two, etc. But no, the algorithm ends right there, okay? And that's it, okay? So that's another example of using uh, bubble sort, but one that ends early.